The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. We had studied all these issues over the years, I and mean, we'd studied marriage and parenting and sex and the workplace stuff, and suddenly God asked us to do this, and this was the one area that Jeff and I were really not on the same page. We, we were like most people. We didn't fight, we avoided it. Find out from Shanti Felton the one thing most couples are afraid to talk about, next on Life Today. Shanti Feldham is here, and she has uh, written lots of great books. Uh, I tease uh, some of our guests. I say, this is your television show. <laughs> I always tell uh, Dr. Tony Evans and, and Priscilla Shower, and I go, well, this is your television program. We, we just kind of try to pay the bills. <laughs> and uh, Shanti is one of our favorites. She's, uh, she's really a blessing. Now, get this. <laughs> Thriving in love and money. She talks about five game-changing insights about your relationship, your money and yourself. And uh, so I really think that uh, Shanti's got something uh, that'll be helpful to a lot of people. Would you welcome Shanti Feldman back to Life Today? Thank you, guys. Good to see you. It's always so good to be with you guys. I know. And you're doing good? Yes. Although, you know, book coming out and. Keep you busy? Yes. Exactly. And are y'all still uh, married and everything? Yes. With even... Believe it or not, we managed to stay married while doing this research project. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this about the money situation. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's a big issue in marriages and relationships, that it is a real serious, serious issue? Actually, it's a huge issue in marriage. This is in every poll that's ever been done by churches, ministries, when they always say, what else do you need help with in your marriage? Money is always up there at the top. And it's the easy thing is to think, well, if I had more of it, <laughs> yeah. we wouldn't be fighting about it. But it turns out that's not true. Less and a lot seem to have equal consequences. They yes. both lead to a lot of tension that I, I really believe the supernatural is essential. I think the yeah. supernatural is essential when there's less to learn how to manage a little less. And I don't even know if I'm getting on any of your territory because it may be exactly where you're going. But I really believe it would take, you almost wonder sometimes it might not take more supernatural when you got a lot. Because the more blessed people are, and God even warned his people going into the promised land, yeah. you better be careful. You're going to think you did it. You're going to find yep. many things that are not necessarily bad things, but good things to worship and idolize. So, boy, well, it's an issue. It is an issue. And actually, it's interesting that you said that. I wasn't actually going to bring this up, but I will. Um, because one of the things we found statistically in the surveys, we, we do all these big nationally representative surveys to try to figure out how are people relating around money. And I should explain, by the way, the book really doesn't, it's not about budgeting. It's not about money management. There's literally nothing in there about getting out of debt. This it's, isn't another Dave Ramsey book. No, <laughs> okay. it's entirely. And those are good, by the way. Yeah, yeah yes. But there are plenty of those great resources. Mm -hmm. We What we felt God asking us to do was really dive in to what is it that creates a great relationship around money. And it turns out when you're having those money issues, it, it's actually not about the money. It's about how money makes us feel and how it makes our spouse feel. And it turns out that one of the key issues that we found is that, yes, it matters for a relationship to have some cushion. It doesn't matter, apparently, it, I should say, it doesn't matter what the income level is. It matters that you live below the line. So that's mm -hmm. the cushion. Mm -hmm. But the bigger issue that we found statistically is whether or not you can talk about it. And we found that, believe it or not, if you have plenty of cushion but can't talk about it, the relationship is worse than if you didn't have the cushion but you could talk about it. Mm. So that's what we're trying to help couples do is actually be able to come together around money and be able to have those conversations. Well, doing counseling and then just myself, Betty and I live in you know, 76 years, you see a lot of things, you experience a lot of things, you talk to a lot of people. And most uh, people, period, and couples don't even communicate good, period. No. That, that, that probably is not any single bigger issue 
than poor communication. That's that's really a problem nationally. We nationally. don't communicate. We don't come to the yes. table of reason. We don't have a civil discussion much anymore. Well, believe it or not, when it comes to money, all the stuff that you normally do well, even more goes out the window. <laughs> we we found that, believe it or not, only 23% of people can talk about money. Like you guys. Mm -hmm. You all talk about we're, money, we're, we're right? You guys are very good. Why do you good. think that is? Uh, well, it, <laughs> it actually turns out that one of the main reasons underneath the surface is that you actually probably understand some things about each other and understand what some of the factors are that are going on in your heart, in your spouse's heart, and a lot of us don't, 77% of us. I will tell you that when Jeff and I knew that God were, was asking us to study this topic, we're like, no, <laughs> because we had studied all these issues over the years. I and mean, we'd studied marriage and parenting and sex and the workplace stuff. And suddenly God asked us to do this on money. And this was the one area that Jeff and I were really not on the same page. So much so that I'm going to lose all credibility with you when I tell you this. <laughs> but so much so that Jeff kept wanting to go to the Dave Ramsey course mm -hmm. at our church. <laughs> and finally, he went on his own because I wouldn't go with him. <laughs> well, was, was this a good thing that he did? Well, actually? it was, but it wasn't because we couldn't talk about it. We, we were like most people. We didn't fight about money. We avoided it. And it turns out that for most people... There are a few, five, we found five factors that are sort of running underneath the surface that we don't even know are going on in our house, in our heart and our spouse's heart. Well, I'm, they're right here on page 17, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm, you wanted to touch on three of them. The first yeah. is we aren't valuing what our partner values. Second, we have fears our partner doesn't comprehend yeah. and are using money to try to relieve them, which may be making our partner's fears worse. Yeah. Three, subconsciously or consciously, we're resisting being fully one in marriage. And the enemy's fighting oneness in the body of Christ, unity, and oneness in marriage and all relationships, especially just with family. And it is coming out in how we think about and handle money. You wanted to touch at least briefly on three. I do. The first is one of the factors that is often causing the, the clash is that you're not valuing what your spouse values. They're not valuing what you value. And we don't really realize that, you know, we're different people. We should know that we have different things that matter to us. But for some reason, we don't. And we kind of think the other person's values are silly. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll give you an example of this. So whenever Jeff and I would go out to eat, you know, we don't go out a ton, but you know, we would, we would be having a very pleasant conversation and it would start to go off the rails when the server would come over and ask what we wanted. And Jeff would order a water because he's thinking I'm trying to pay off student loan debt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I would order a diet Coke and sometimes even a refill. <laughs> And in, in Jeff's mind, he's thinking, this is a ridiculous use of $3 a pop, right? <laughs> and, and, and we didn't realize, and he's got all these ideas, and he says later, he tells me, I'm actually thinking that it's a character flaw on your part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and it comes to find out that I didn't realize what he's valuing is, you know, we have to quickly plow through our student loan debt. Like that was something that really mattered to him. Okay, I didn't really realize that. He didn't know that for me, I actually don't really like the taste of water all that much. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but I actually just kind of want to drink with a meal and I won't enjoy, even if it's a great steak dinner, I, I just won't enjoy it as much if I don't have something to drink. I'd rather stay home and save the money, which is totally fine <laughs> if I can't have something to drink. That is a silly example but it's those silly examples, those everyday that moments. That to build up that, until it's absolutely. really monumental. And it turns out all of us have all these different ways that we value things and we don't realize it. Another example is, do you value time or do you value money? Are you willing to pay for the movie tickets online in advance, even though it's $2 extra <laughs> per ticket? Because you can like 
get a seat reserved or you say, no, 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 I'll go an hour ahead of time and stand in line. <laughs> and each of you could literally say, oh my gosh, it's so clear that, you know, we need to buy the tickets ahead of time. Oh, two dollars, yeah, that's fine. It's so clear that it's better to save the money and stand in line for an hour. You know, this, just listen to this, this sounds petty to me. <laughs> but it really does, it sounds petty and yet it becomes huge to the point of people not getting along. And it's to the point it's of over, divorce, it's, 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 uh, even. It, it does, it's just, it's, it's breaking my heart. I mean, if you yeah. can say some things to people, would they quit doing that? I mean, just to really understand that these are very minor yes. differences and they're surely not worth going to the opposite end of the house or the separate corners, you know, or gosh, it just it breaks my heart to think that we do that. Well, know? and here's what's one of the things that's underneath that is that honestly, as we're sort of, we don't really think it through in a logical way. We're all kind of reacting emotionally to things. But we found on the survey that the vast majority of people sort of go, when I do think about it, like on the survey, I realize that at the time I'm thinking, you're just not thinking clearly. And if you were actually using logic and thinking clearly, you would clearly agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so we truly, it's like what Jeff said, I just thought you had a character flaw. <laughs> and you know what? Once we actually recognize, you know what? God made my spouse different. Like we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. We have different things that matter to us, which is great, but it means that we have to suddenly go, you know, the way that my that God made my spouse is legitimate. The Did way you get that to they you care. Almost laugh about it? Well, now we can. <laughs> yeah, well, now, to me, I think you should. Yeah. That's what I was asking. And yeah. the, the key now is that we call it out and we're like, oh my gosh, this is an example of you're valuing this, I'm valuing that, neither of us is wrong or right. I mean, sometimes there are clear wrongs and rights, but often it's just really a matter sure. of judgment and value and mm -hmm. opinion. So that's one. The second one, it turns out there are very few, when it comes to money, we were actually surprised to find there were very few gender differences um, between you know men and women and how they handle money. Like men and women are equally likely to be spenders or savers for example, mm -hmm. um, but it turns out there is something that was a very clear gender difference with most, not all, but most men and women, which is that we tend to have two different sets of fears and insecurities running underneath the surface about money and how we handle things. And the easiest way of explaining it is that for men, most men are instinctively, subconsciously always wondering Am I going to be able to provide for the family? How am I going to be able to provide? Like there, there's a, a fear that I may not be, I may not be enough for that. And so it's sort of like staying away from the edge of a cliff. Like you try to back away, you know? And so a guy would try to work a lot of hours, right? Or take a lot of overtime, like anything to stay away from that edge and not realizing that for women, it's a different set of primary kind of instinctive fears. Yeah, I might be thinking about money too, but really what feels worse to me is, oh my gosh, he's working so many hours and he's distant and he's not seeing the kids' soccer games. And so that's my cliff, my feeling like, are we okay as a family? Are the kids feeling loved? Are we okay in our marriage? And so to stay away from that cliff's edge, we wanna do things together. And we wanna to go to the movie, or we wanna go out to eat, or we wanna go do stuff, and hey, guess what? That often costs money, which pulls him closer to the edge of his cliff. And so we don't realize that our efforts to sort of stay away from what's making us afraid often makes our partner's fears worse. And it makes so much difference if we'll just go, wait, you mean, really? Like. Jeff, you really honestly wonder how you're gonna be able to provide for the family and whether you're enough, like, that's a thing, for real? And honoring that and for him going, really? Like, just because we're having arguments over this or you're really worried about us and our relationship, and like, that's a thing? And so recognizing this is the insecurity, the doubt that's running under the surface and I can reassure my spouse in this area and recognize how I'm triggering it with how I'm handling money. The third one. The third one, this one is really covering all of it because it turns out that we 
we tend to resist being one in marriage, period. And it's coming out in how we handle money. And we don't think of it this way. We don't realize that's what we're doing, but that's what we're doing. And um, we kind of just went our own way. I mean, if you think about it, you'd think there was something called sin. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that it's coming out so often and I just kind of want to handle money the way I want to handle money. Mm. And so today it looks a lot like many people, about 45% of, of couples will often keep separate bank accounts. It's just easier. Your paycheck goes into yours, my paycheck goes into mine, and we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to come together. And you don't realize you're institutionalizing a lack of the oneness that we're supposed to have in marriage. I often will talk to people and they'll say, well, I don't do that. You know, I don't keep separate bank accounts. We, we have joint accounts. And, and I always say, yeah, maybe you don't. And maybe you are one, but do you ever try to take the Amazon package off the front step before your spouse gets home? <laughs> and it's the same desire to avoid oneness and transparency and accountability that causes some people to separate their accounts entirely. I feel like that the... the uh the oneness in uh, our communication is critical. Mm -hmm. You know, Betty, you and I really do work at that mm -hmm. and is dedicated and with as much understanding as, as we have of the importance of it. Uh, the enemy will still try to keep mm -hmm. us at odds. He'll try to uh, get us uh, hearing something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, my hearing is not good anymore. Uh, and if I don't happen to have my hearing aids in, she talks louder, and I think, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> she said, well, I've said something three times. You didn't hear it the first three, so I thought I'd yell at the fourth. And it really, it's not quite like that, but sometimes it's pretty tense. And, and then we'll really sit down and say, you know, let's understand how mm -hmm. we feel and try to hear each other's heart. I don't think we'd make it if we didn't. No, as that communication is so important with one yes. another. And being honest with one another about what's going on inside of you. But you often don't even know what's going yeah. on inside. I could never have articulated mm. some of these things no. until yeah. we started doing this research, which we were scared to do, yeah. but I'm glad we did yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think even with the little illustration I'm using here is the point I'm trying to make is no matter how dedicated you are to it, you can still have tension. But we're dedicated to it enough that we're going to sit down and get through it because that open, loving, honest, clear communication is critical. Father, I pray that for every person that's listening. And I know one of the things that I, I can just sense, even when I'm praying for people, that there's somebody very lonely right now, that their whole relationship was shattered. So I want to ask you to be a very personal comfort to them. Take all the shame or the guilt and Lord, just take them in your arms and let them know how close you want to be to them. And then, Lord, those that are with the person that they are having some communication issues or money issues, would you bring them to the, the table of reason in your presence? And, Lord, somehow encourage them to invite you into the situation, into the discussion. And just heal the relationship in Jesus' name. Amen. And where there are money issues, and there are, I think Shante has a, a wonderful gift, she and her husband, to help. And uh, she really is, she's gifted to write and break it down. And uh, where it's like sitting down with a, a counselor with wisdom. So I, I hope you'll, you'll get it. Uh, uh, Shante, our, our viewers love helping others. And right now we're rescuing people from sexual trafficking. Yeah. Aren't you glad that our own nation and national leadership now is calling attention yeah. to the importance of dealing with this real crisis, yeah. even law enforcement and everything else? Let me, let me show you what the miracle of love does. I want you just to listen to God, I, I think, speak through Sheila's heart about what she's seeing and the freedom that you offer people through your love the miracle you become for him. Watch this closely. This is the last week now of Rescue Life, and what we really need you just to hear clearly what God is saying about it to you. Watch closely. Sex trafficking is the worst kind of prison that I've ever seen. I've been in maximum security prisons. I've talked to women on death row. There is a worse kind of prison than that and that's sex trafficking, because it is pure evil. 
We will rise up and we will change this and we will do it because think, I mean, our whole thing here at life is reach, rescue, restore. Reach her and let her know, you know what? Hey, there's a better way for you to live your life. You don't have to do this. Rescue. Go into these horrible bars and clubs and brothels and rescue these girls and then restore them. Bring them to a place where they can learn their value in Christ. The value that God places on their life is not diminished by what they have to do every night. And because of that, we get to tell them, you are not a number. We will step in, we will say, let us be your spiritual mom and dad. Let us be your big sister in Christ. Let us be the ones who come and fight for you because you are worth fighting for. Wow, working girl, that breaks my wow, heart. It does mine too. You know, like Sheila said, we must rise up. We must reach out with our hearts and with our support to get these precious little ones out of this cruel, lifestyle, the, the way they treat them, the way they, they frighten them, tell them they'll beat them, they'll, they'll, they'll kill them if they don't do what they say. These little ones, they're, they're carried off to a place to where their, their lives are in danger from one moment to the next. Please, let's help keep them from having to be, go through these horrible, horrible situations. Let's join together and make the difference. Let's give hope to these precious little ones that can't see any hope right now. Thank you so much. Betty, it's really not an exaggeration that we can reach them because of love. The people that are there, like you watch them even break into the room there, you can't imagine all the courage and compassion that is enabled by the support because there are people that are filled with love, courage, compassion, that are ready to break doors down to set people free. We have the border uh, security and that protect the border to get the ones that are being trapped or targeted, and they can see them and head them off. They can tell them what's coming up, what these people are trying to do, and rescue them before they ever get them into the trafficking. And then once we reach them and we rescue them from it and put them in a secure compound or like that beautiful Destiny house that has just changed the lives of thousands and thousands, many are now teachers, even college professors that were rescued and went through that center and got trained, learned English too. Love never fails. We, we just sometimes fail to release it or let it find free expression. And you've done it so wonderfully. Betty, I don't know any people anywhere that more freely, with focus and determination and love, give more to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying, to feed the hungry, to give water to the thirsty, than the viewers of life. Right now in this last week, Rescue Life, some friends have said, we'll match what you give. That's how much we believe in this need and this opportunity. So would you right now go online, take your bank card, go online, dial the phone number, use that card like a check, Make the gift God puts on your heart, knowing it's going to be doubled. It counts an average of $128 to rescue one, to start them into the restoration process. We reach out to them, rescue them, restore them. As you know that now if you give $128, it won't rescue one, it'll be two. Do you know when I ask for $1,280 to reach out and rescue 10, it'll now reach and rescue 20? Whatever you do will be doubled. I'm praying every one of you watching right now will go get that card. If you write a check, make it to life. But call us and tell us what you're putting in the mail. We need to know. We need to tell the mission workers the help is on the way. Love never fails. Thank you so much for making the gift. Thank you for caring.
Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $250,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help reach, rescue, or restore one child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift, we'll send you this beautiful freedom bracelet, handcrafted by survivors of human trafficking who want to say thank you for helping those still trapped. Wear it as a wonderful reminder to pray for the outreach. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Freedom Tote. This quality canvas tote bag is made by trafficked survivors who are now learning a new trade and includes spiritual life resources such as books, devotionals, CDs, or DVDs. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children. And you may request our beautiful new bronze sculpture, A Mother's Strength. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. You know, I do want to remind you, this is the last week, and we do need to hear from all of you who can help. Um, we have the gifts that we're sending to say thank you. If you say, James, you know, we you just talked about money, and the program's been about it, and maybe Shanti can help. She and her husband, they're being so honest. You and Betty have been honest about what can come up. Would you mind sending us that? We're trying to help rescue and and restore those precious ones. But would you send us the book? Yes, we will. You can get it online. You can get it in a bookstore. But if you help us help others, we'll be glad to send it to you. Would you join Betty and me and say thanks to Shante for sharing with us? Thanks so much. Shante, bless you and your husband. And, you. Uh, y'all, y'all stay warm, okay? <laughs> and all of you be warm. Remember last week, thanks so much for your help. Thanks for watching. wonder where God is and does he see what's going on Sheila Walsh tomorrow life today is made possible by the supporters of life outreach international your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life the ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor the ministry is a member of the ECFA